Hi, Sergey. Hello, Petra Savozk and Karelia. Thank you for inviting me to exhibit my artwork in the Fiat Center. My paintings and prints on exhibition are a show, a transition from dark interiors and dark landscapes painted in the autumn and the winter to a reawakening of spring and summer. Uh, my paintings and prints are boldly flowering and so am I. The paintings and prints on exhibition were created over the last three years where I have visited in the springtime uh, Japan and painted the cherry blossom and uh, in the summertime I went to Albrighton to David Austin's uh, gardens. David Austin is a famous worldwide rose grower and developer of roses. I have been painting there all of the summer into the autumn. In the exhibition, the paintings that I've made on location at David Austin's Rose Gardens, and you will see how I've translated those images into Japanese-influenced prints. You can see my dry brush marks in layers in the paintings, and you can see them simplified and laid bare in the prints, the same way that Japanese artists use simple, bold, dry brush marks and uh, fine energetic lines. Sasha Belislavov, who was from Petrosovodsk, came to teach at a school where I was working he was he came to my house we had dinner other friends came to and uh, we got to know him when he left the uk after a couple of years um, i gave him some of my artwork and i said you keep whichever artwork you like but um, anything that you don't want give to either a school or um, a hospital or a friend, anybody who you think who would like it. Sasha gave the prints to some friends of his who eventually became Art Contact. They were Marsha Ufa, Sergei Terenjev and Arkady Morozov and a, a large group of a creative friends. They invited me, not in the usual political channels, but from their own volition to have an exhibition. And they organized it and they showed it in the Artists' Union Gallery, but it wasn't an invitation from the Artists' Union. Uh, so it was quite a brave and extraordinary thing to do. That's how I first came to meet people in the um, in Petrosovodsk and Karelia, but there's a lot more to it. <laughs> it didn't stop there with the exhibition. When I met everybody, and I was so impressed with the way that they worked as a team, they considered me as an equal. There, I had a voice, and I could propel myself forward to achieve amazing things. Uh, they made a, a fantastic film when I was there. It was about um, seeing what was in the museum, but in a new context. It was talking about socialist realism in a different way. And I was so impressed by the exhibition that it made me feel like if, they, if everyone here can do this, I can do this. And so when I went back to London, I curated a number of amazing exhibitions of uh, British artists that was shown at the Carillion State Museum and of Art Contact, which was shown at 
um, a Highgate gallery called the Hardware Gallery. And I also publicised worldwide, before the internet, an exhibition that was staged eventually at the Karelian State Museum by Art Contact Russian artists, which was epic. And none of these exhibitions, including my own, no one had seen anything from Europe, let alone a living person like myself, um, for 70 years since before the <laughs> Russian Revolution, which is incredible. So uh, I had, by meeting everybody, a baptism of fire, as we call it, and it energised me and made me feel that the things that had held me back before were unimportant. Going to Petrosvodsk made me realise that I could do anything. On a personal level, my paintings and prints do really reflect my inner world. And um, in the past, as I say, they were dark and so on, and now they aren't. So I guess I'm not in touch with my feelings, which is great most of the time, but um, I guess I must be in a better place emotionally for me not to be in that dark, <laughs> dark attics and dark ponds, but with the fine, delicate, feminine even, flowers. Uh, so I relate to the world in that way, but I also take part in projects and interrelate with other artists and people I don't know. I, I teach people who I initially don't know and I get to know, and so I connect with people expressing getting them to express themselves. Um, a project which is nothing to do with printmaking per se was the Angel of the Lee Valley and I did lots of workshops with uh, people of all different nationalities um, in a poor part of London, a bit like the one I grew up in. Everybody got on and I wanted them to make something that was relevant to them. Uh, I decided to make a big piece of land art since I was being commissioned by Lee Valley Regional Park. I made an angel the size of a football pitch and as they were paying, we had four hot air balloons free for the public to go up in and look down at the angel. And when they, when they looked down at the angel, they saw in the angel's gown their studies and drawings of angel goddesses, superwoman angels, abstract ones. The Muslim women made abstract designs from the garden of the angel. And also she was holding a maze which had all the different religions of that locality. Some more recent projects have been with science and art. And uh, I had a residency with a science um, cancer research laboratory. And I... Um, was fascinated by the way that they could see things and different to human beings just losing your eyes but other forms of data and uh, I invited a, a new friend called Claire O'Hagan into this laboratory with me and uh, we made some work together which was fun and it was also very moving because we not only learnt from the experts about DNA and other aspects of cancer research, but we also realised that some of those doctors who were 
in the same place as the research laboratory dealt with real people. And that led on to the next project that was about how people deal themselves with knowing they have cancer. The piece of art that developed from the first project with the laboratory we called Transformations in Science and Art. And we made this piece 42 metres long. And that was because I had some fabric that was 42 metres long. And it was also the answer to the meaning of life according to The Hitchhiker's Guide of the Galaxy, which was a book and a radio programme. Other piece, which was called White Work, we invited lots of people whose lives had been touched by cancer, either they themselves had had it, or maybe their child or the mother, and they all made pieces of white on white textiles embroidery, uh, fun embroidery, as well as carefully made, um, dedicated craft embroidery. And that was 20 meters long. Whilst we were making these two projects, uh, we discovered a scientist called Rosalind Franklin. And she had been dealt a terrible injustice. She was one of the pioneers in science research. And she, uh, if she had not discovered a particular X-ray crystallography photograph of um, DNA, then Crick and Watson would not have been able to publish their findings and get the Nobel Peace Prize for their discovery. They didn't tell her that they'd seen and rummaged through her research. They didn't credit her and they kept very quiet about it until much afterwards. And she died by then, she died at 37. So we were angry and we have made artwork dedicated to her and exhibited this, um, mostly in the States, involved a campaign for Rosalind Franklin. And today, in the UK, um, the government have minted a new coin, a 50 pence piece, for Rosalind Franklin. Woohoo! <laughs> I want to add something about Otpitchatki, the science art triennial held in Petrosovodsk. Uh, I took part in this with a film that I made especially for uh, the theme, which was the White Sea. Uh, I called the film A Deep White Sea and it uh, showed ancient creatures going back in time to the beginning of time. It was quite an extraordinary and experimental film. I was working with Wiley O'Hagan and we made it in collaboration together. And uh, we had another project that we were supposed to take part in. And so this film became part of two projects. And the other project was for a Mike Nyman's film competition and so the soundtrack uh, needed to be Mike Nyman's and we included a beautiful lyrical uh, symphony but it didn't quite fit into the strange uh, mystical images of the film for Petra Savosk and I kept saying to Claire I want to put drum and bass on it, which of course was ridiculous. But in the end, that's what we did. And amazingly, we won first prize. Michael Nyman's, this um, famous English composer, making beautiful music gave us the award for the audacity of shoving drum and bass over the top. He, he loved what we did and he loved our film.
I thought we were committing uh, competition suicide, but our audacity and braveness paid off. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming to see the exhibition. I hope you enjoy seeing the paintings and prints. And uh, I'm very honored to be showing at the Fjord or Media Center. Uh, and if it wasn't for this pandemic, I would be so happy to be with you today and meet you and talk to my lovely friends, uh, Marsha, Sergei, Akadi, and everybody else. Good wishes to you, and I hope to see you again soon. <laughs>